Hello again. Welcome back to Statistics. Today we are in Section 7.3 and we're going to talk a little bit about assessing normality. The thing is, sometimes we don't have enough information about a population to decide whether it's normally distributed or not, so we have to rely on information we get from the sample. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to use normal probability plots to assess normality. And this is a very short section, so let's get started. Now, up to this point, we have always said that a random variable x is normally distributed, or at least approximately normal, if the histogram of the data is symmetric and bell-shaped. And this does work well for large data sets, but the shape of a histogram drawn from a small sample of observations doesn't always accurately represent the shape of the population. So for this reason, we need another way to tell if a random variable is normally distributed or not when we're looking at a small set of sample data. So what we will use to help us determine if a sample comes from a normally distributed population is called a normal probability plot. And this is a graph that plots the observed data values versus the normal scores. So now what are normal scores? A normal score is the expected z-score of a data value, assuming that the distribution of the random variable is normal. You see, the problem is that we cannot calculate a data value's z-score if we don't know the mean and standard deviation of the population that it came from. And here we're specifically talking about a situation where we don't know much about the population. So of course we would not have the mu and sigma that go with that data value. So this expected z-score that we're going to find depends on the number of observations in the data set. And the idea behind finding the expected z-score is that if the data comes from a normally distributed population, we should be able to predict the area to the left of each of the data values. So if the dots in the normal probability plot form a relatively straight line, then we will take that as evidence that the population is normally distributed or at least almost normally distributed. Now here's the procedure from your textbook for how to construct a normal probability plot. Now we're going to end up doing this on the calculator, but I do want to walk you through doing one by hand just so you can understand what the calculator is doing for us. So step one would be to take your data set and arrange the data in ascending order. And remember, this will be a small data set. So we're talking about less than 30 values for sure. And step two would be to compute F sub I. So F sub I is computed by doing I minus 0.375 over N plus 0.25, where I is the index or the position of the data in the ordered list, and N is the number of observations. So what F sub I really is, is the expected proportion of observations less than or equal to the ith data value. So this is like the area to the left of the Z score. So what we do with that expected proportion is we go to our Z table and we use it to find the corresponding Z score. And then we plot the observed values on the horizontal axis and the corresponding expected Z scores on the vertical axis. Now typically we will rely on the calculator to do these normal probability plots for us, but just this one time, let me walk through this one with you. I don't want you to feel like you have to remember every step. Anytime you have to do one of these, you'll be able to do it on the calculator. But I just would like for you to at least once see what it is that the calculator is doing for us. So in this example, it says the data in the table represent the finishing time in seconds for six randomly selected races of a Greyhound named Barbie's Bomber in the 5 16th mile race at Greyhound Park in Dubuque, Iowa. Is there evidence to support the belief that the variable finishing time is normally distributed? Okay, so what we would do is take these six values and sort them from smallest to largest. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Now for the smallest data value, the index is one, and for the next smallest data value, the index is two, and so on. And now it's time to calculate F sub I. And to do that, we need that formula from the last slide, so let me just flip back and show it to you. And it says F sub I equals I minus 0 0.375 over N plus 0 0.25. So I is the index, and N is the sample size. So for our problem, N equals 6. So using that formula, for the index of 1, we would get an F sub I of 0 0.1. And for the index of 2, we would get an F sub I of 0 0.26. And you would do that for each index. Now remember, what these F sub I values are is the proportion of observations that we can expect to be less than or equal to the corresponding observed value. So we could expect about 10% of the population values to be less than 31.26, and we could expect about 26% of the population values to be less than 31.35 if, in fact, the population that this sample was drawn from is normally distributed. So now we want to take each of these proportions and find out what the z-score is that has each of these as the area to its left. And those will be our expected z-scores, or what we called normal scores. So using just our regular Z table, we could find that the Z score that has an area of 0.1 to its left is negative 1.28, and the Z score that has an area of 0.26 to its left is negative 0.64, and so on until we get to the last one. And the Z score that has an area of 0.9 to its left is positive 1.28. So now what we have is a set of points. The observed values are the X coordinate and the expected Z scores or the normal scores are the Y coordinate. So I'm going to label my horizontal axis so that I can graph 31.26 to 32.52 on it. I'm just gonna start with 31 and count by quarters up to 32.75 and that gives me a place for every X value. And then for the normal scores, they run from negative 1.28 to positive 1.28. So I'm just going to label my y-axis from negative 1.5 to positive 1.5. Okay, now this first observed value is 31.26. So that would be just about right here. And the expected z-score is negative 1.28. So that would be up here between negative 1 and negative 1.5. So somewhere in here, and I'll put that dot. And then for the second one, we have 31.35 and negative 0.64. So 31.35 ought to be about here, and negative 0.64 ought to be up in here somewhere. And then 31.91 and negative 0.20. So 31.9 would be, I believe, over in here, and negative 0.2 would be up here, just slightly below the zero and we can continue that for the other three dots. And now you can see that what we get is a set of dots that form a relatively straight line. It's not perfect, but we don't expect it to be perfect, but it does look pretty straight. And so that means that it's reasonable for us to conclude that this sample was taken from a population that is approximately normally distributed. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to get that normal probability plot on the graphing calculator. And this is going to be the same procedure whether you have the new operating system or the old operating system. What you're going to do is enter your data in list 1 like I have here, and then get into your stat plot controls. So hit second, then y equals, and of course we're using the second function so you'll actually be accessing the stat plot menu. And what we want to do is change plot one to a normal probability plot. You can see right now it's set on histogram for my calculator. So now I'm going to press enter and I want to make sure that it's on so make sure that that's blinking and highlighted. And then if you 
arrow down one time, you will be able to select the type of graph that you want. Now remember, the first type of graph is a scatter diagram, and that's what we looked at in Chapter 4. This next type of graph we have not used, but this is not what we're after. Then, of course, we have histogram and two types of box plots. We've looked at all of these. The one we want today is the sixth one. This is the normal probability plot. So what you need to do to get to this is use your right arrow key. You might think that you could arrow down and then write twice, but if you arrow down, it's going to skip you all the way down to X list. So just hit the right arrow key until you get that normal probability plot highlighted, and then press Enter, and you can see that my options changed down here. So now data list needs to be set wherever you have your data stored. Mine are stored in list 1. And then data axis, you can just leave that at X. And you can change the mark to whatever you want. I just always leave this first option selected. And now we are going to hit graph over here on the right. And if you can't see anything, remember that means you're not zoomed in properly. So you're going to hit the zoom key. And then to zoom in on the statistical data is option 9. You could either arrow down to number 9 using the down arrow key, or you can just hit 9. And there you can see our normal probability plot. That looks very similar to the one we made together on the last slide. And you can see that these dots are forming a relatively straight line. So again, the fact that we have a relatively straight line here tells us that the underlying population that this data was sampled from is normally distributed. Here is another example for you. This one is an exercise in your textbook. It says a random sample of 25 years between 1890 and 2011 was obtained and the amount of snowfall in inches for Memphis was recorded. And I've already entered these 25 values into list 1. And so now what we can do is go ahead and graph this. I'm just going to open up the stat plot menu and show you that the normal probability plot is still selected and it's set to pull data from list 1 and it's going to plot the data on the x-axis. So you really don't have to do this if you already know that the stat plot has the settings you want it to have. And from here I'm going to go ahead and press graph and then I will zoom in on the statistical data. So I'll do zoom, option 9, and here you can see my normal probability plot. Now there is a definite pattern to it, but it's not a straight line, and therefore we would conclude that the population this sample was pulled from is not a normally distributed population. So we would not be able to use the z-table to draw any conclusions or make any predictions about probabilities based on this sample.